we always are building narratives around architecture or architecture within narratives. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and today we embark on a journey into the realm of architectural innovation with a spotlight on the esteemed 212 Box. Founded by the visionary Eric Clough, 212 Box draws inspiration from a rich tapestry of experiences. Hailing from the heartlands of the Midwest, Eric's upbringing in Brussels and London bestowed upon him a refined sensibility for texture, craftsmanship and intricate detailing. A journey that saw him traverse continents culminated in the establishment of 212 Box in the vibrant landscape of New York City. Much like the architectural marvels they conceive, 212 Box's identity mirrors the flexibility and expansiveness of their design ethos. Rooted in a philosophy of petrol growth, the firm's name, derived from the fusion of area code and box, embodies boundless aspirations. This was a really interesting uh, conversation because I've spoken with Eric before. He's been a, a guest here on Business of Architecture. And today we focused on one particular project, a penthouse in Houston and their subsequent marketing of this project and the publication that they produced and the production and PR uh, events that they created around this singular project. And I, I thought what was really fascinating and why I love talking to Eric is that Eric is so passionate and creative and innovative and he naturally markets. He naturally finds himself doing these entrepreneurial, outgoing collaborations, enrolling other people into, into these amazing visions and ideas that he has. And they're all driven from a deep architectural sensibility, a deep architectural idea or commitment or passion. Um, and we find when we look at Eric as a, as a business person, that there's really good marketing and business principles, which have been driven by architectural aspirations uh, and there's a lovely kind of meeting of the two worlds of the business side and of the architectural design side so really enjoyed speaking with eric it was a great privilege to be uh, visit him in new york in his incredible offices so sit back relax and enjoy eric cloth of 212 box and now a message from today's sponsor BIM can be important for your next project, but that's not the only thing you need for your next project. That's why it's important that 95% of manufacturers who offer free BIM files on RCAT also offer another type of data that your project needs. That means 95% of the products with BIM also have CAD files, they have specifications, and a patented spec wizard and or they have product information to help you make sure you're making the right selection for your particular condition. So stop going to a site with just BIM Go to RCAT where everything is there collected for you to get everything you need for your next project for free and without registering. That's RCAT, A-R-C-A-T dot com. Eric, welcome to the Business of Architecture. Once again, how are you? Wonderful. Thanks for having me again. It was nice to see you again. Absolute pleasure. And a beautiful pleasure to be here in your incredible offices down mm. near Wall Street in the financial district of New York in front of this incredible painting and this even more extraordinary table that you were just telling me about earlier, which is yeah. quite amazing. Yeah, Ian Monroe is a dear friend of mine and uh, uh, is in London artist and uh, uh, we do a lot of work together and try to collaborate on a lot of things. So, But I love his paintings and we've been selling these to clients. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so I was really interested and curious and interested to talk to you again last time um, you were on the show, we spoke a lot about the kind of history of your, of 212 Box, how you started your work in, in kind of high-end fashion retail and some of the clients that you've, you've worked with. You've got an extraordinary portfolio of Thanks. incredible, thoughtful, um, interesting buildings. You're working with titans of industry right across <laughs> the globe. You know, and, you're, and we have some wonderful clients, yes. And and you're working, you know, with, with big, um, you know, very well established brands and kind of helping them develop brand experience here in the city, around the world. Um, again, um, Christian Lebatin is who we spoke about a lot last time, and um, and the work there. And one of the things I wanted to to talk to you about was your recent publication 
on the Houston penthouse, yes. um, which I thought was a really interesting initiative where you, you kind of created a monograph out of a single book. Yeah. And I thought we could talk a little bit about that and the, the kind of marketing thought behind it or what was driving some of the ideas, um, how you, you know, what were you, what were you seeing it as a, as a business play and how were you kind of interwoving that business play with, with its kind of creative integrity? Yeah. Uh, so I think there are two ways maybe to start is thinking about the project. And mm -hmm. um, it's a residential penthouse in Houston, Texas. Um, and it was one of those extraordinary moments where we, uh, you know, as you design and uh, you're showing and presenting things to the client, the client kept on saying yes to things and, um, you know, multiple things where we thought, oh, maybe choose one of three or something. And they just kept saying yes, yes. Um, so it was a wonderful moment of, of realizing like, oh, well, let, then let's kind of stretch this and, and see if we can bring collaborations in and different artists. So the entire penthouse um, was a real team effort on um, collaborating with artists and vendors and, and um, makers and, and just extraordinary artisans and craftsmanship. So mm -hmm. um, was it a client that you'd worked with before? Uh, no. We had designed the lobby and amenities in this particular building, and then mm -hmm. they bought one of the penthouses, and uh, we ended up designing five different penthouses, but one of them um, uh, was this extraordinary result of, of uh, really t you know, taking a five-bedroom down to two-bedroom as right. a study. So we, we were in a space. It was very luxurious with the amount of space we, you know, we, we could have for a bedroom suite and mm -hmm. a, a, a primary suite and things like that. Um, so, you know, just the actual apartment and everything we made in it, and then versus maybe just to go back to what we discussed last time, the, the business two and two boxes is based on um, six disciplines or it's six sides of the box. Um, five disciplines, but then uh, the sixth side, and sorry, art, architecture and interiors, graphics, products, film and animation, and then larger real estate projects. Mm -hmm. um, the sixth side is all about uh, both the clients um, and uh, everyone we, you know, team up with. Um, so, you know, what I love doing is, is being really open with collaborations and, and um, you know, as you build things with tons of contractors, everyone has a different way of building things. And especially all of our experience around the world doing, you know, retail stores for Christian Louboutin. Um, you just you get in a different thought process you mm -hmm. really understand um cultures when you start building within different cultures and and so uh we've collected all these wonderful vendors and i just kept them pulling them in for this you know kind of glorious ex you know opportunity and um so the book is uh about the penthouse um, and it just goes room by room and through all of our mm -hmm. um, fun details. But uh, it really is a celebration of 50 of the artisans and their stories um, right. because we wanted to express that. So, um, you know, one small little secret is uh, I wanted to do, uh, you know, like we didn't have a book. We we're 24 years old, almost 25. And I thought, Okay, well, this is a great way to start, and um, it will all be it will be about the the collaborations. And then, this is actually uh, my hope is one of I don't know six to ten books or something that um, you know puzzle together and form some wonderful thing at the end. Uh, so we have just started on the second two books, but um, that. Uh, it was uh, just a wonderful. These going to be books on different projects, and they're all kind of no different disciplines. Or I'm trying oh, to get back see, to like the, okay. you know, um, if I spend a decade on every discipline, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my career, uh, you know, will be you complete. You uh, complete is the holistic. Yes, it's right. my oof complete. Um, so uh, yeah, I, but I I love, um, you know, I think a some people give us a hard time because. It's not really about us, and there was no pictures of us, and there mm -hmm. was, you know, it, I just really, um, 
I wanted to celebrate everyone else's story. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary book. I mean, I've, I've sat down with my partner a few times in an evening, it's just gone through the whole thing and looking at Thanks. all, the, and just, you know, it's a real intense catalog of every single detail of the project. Yeah. And one of the questions I had was, how did you get the, was there any issues with the client allowing you to do that and to go that deep <laughs> into every last little nook and cranny of the, of the project? Because normally, you know, there's, you know, I often hear uh, architects having problems, particularly with high-end residential, where the client's like, nope, we don't want any photographs taken or you're not publishing this. Was that ever an issue or were they quite open and... Do they know about the book? I'm assuming they do. Well, so two, there are two really funny <laughs> stories. Is One, um, you know, this was uh, uh, not their primary residence. So sure. um, that's also, I think, what we realized is... Uh, they were relying on our design intent because every project we do is a collaboration with the client mm -hmm. and we don't have a set style. We are flexible. Um, and if you want modern or traditional, like we're happy to, you know, we try to bring a, um, a classic and elegant aesthetic to any one of those. But, you know, we've done art deco stuff and um, uh, just, you know, find ways of, of, finding our own kind of design within that. But um, this client, uh, uh, just an extraordinary family that supported the arts and pa you know, they were a patron to the arts and <clears throat> the layers became like apparent where, oh my gosh, we can put cutlery in every single you know, beautiful detail and moment. Um, m meaning like we can organize all that and do a 25 foot curiosity cabinet that's mm -hmm. filled with treasures. Um, and I was traveling a lot, so we were collecting wonderful things. Um, so from the client's perspective, they, I, they were fairly open and, but they were not, they're not showy and they're not, um, there, there's no ego at all. And, and, uh, had they known the book would have turned out like this, I think that, you know, they would not, um, totally agree to it. What they did ask me, <laughs> and sorry, this is my point is, so we're, we're handing over the apartment we're doing kind of one of those like, ta da, here's your here's your place and showing them all the details. And, and I'm of course telling the stories of, of all these objects and where we found them and, and who made them. And, and so at the end they said, okay, that was a lot to digest. Can, do you think you could just write down, put some of those stories and write them down for us so that we like have a little packet that we can then tell our friends if someone comes over mm -hmm. and, and, um, or just for us to know, like, yeah. this is really great. And, and, we love that we've been patrons to this. <laughs> and so uh, this was uh, 2020 or something and then COVID. And um, so I dove into like, okay, great. We've got some time opened up and, and uh, you know, one we had, sorry to jump around, but Nick Vertowski photographed, you know, six or 700 beautiful images of this. So we, we had a stockpile of all the detail, details. And then um, when we got uh, Saxon Henry to just interview everyone and we, we together listened to their stories and, and um, she just has a beautiful way of, of presenting all those stories. Um, we do all this and about two years later, um, actually it was, um, so it was published last, um, uh, well, spring, summer. And in August, uh, I was able to send a book um, to the client. And I, 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 I remember... Here are those notes. <laughs> well, yeah, so essentially, um, we were about to have a book launch in September. And in August, I sent him the book with a note that said, um, per your request, here is a book on all of your stories about your apartment. <laughs> and, you know, he called me and I was just, we had just landed in Barcelona and... Um, I uh, was getting this call from the airport and, and he's like, what in the hell did you do? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sorry. It went, you know, like some of our stuff, we go a little overboard on uh, follow through. So, so and that's, that's remarkable then. So that so much of the thinking and the thought that you guys were putting into the client didn't necessarily know that that was, they, they weren't necessarily present to all of the narratives that you were kind of intricately weaving into the, yeah. into the space. Yeah. How do you, um, so when you're kind of designing a brief with a client, how do you give yourself space to be able to go that deep into the narratives 
And because there's, there's an art to this, because if you, you know, the danger is if it, you take the client too deep into this stuff whilst you're doing it, they freak out and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And, but you're also keeping it running inside of the office and with the design. How do you, how do you create that balance just practically running a project? Yeah, you know, we're so fortunate with all of our clients that they, they trust us and, and we're a lot of referral basis. So, sure. you know, someone's maybe kind of vouched for us, yeah. I guess. Um, and then uh, that trust, I don't think I've ever taken advantage of it, but I, I can play within that a little bit. And um, there's a little bit of a troublemaker, not, <laughs> sorry. I say that in the in the way of like you control your um, you know you just want to seize these opportunities and and um, and I I think I can control all the things I want to do with like presenting them in a way of you know look only if you'd like to do this mm -hmm. we have an opportunity but I I think the key is also n not explaining everything and maybe you know there's enough left unsaid yeah. that um, then I, that's the, you know, the little well, fissure I get to really well, it's, it's play like, in. I often use the, the, the Mies van der Rohe quote where he always used to say, don't, don't, you don't need to talk to your clients about architecture. Right. Ask them how their dogs are, how the children <laughs> is. You don't need to go right, into right, the, right. Which, which I think is actually a, 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 a very difficult skill for an architect because it's easy to become totally you know what the client wants and they're not really paying you for exactly what they want there are things but it's part of the architect's skill and discretion to be able to pull out what is the motivator of the project and they also want the architect to do what the architect does yeah but they but the architect has to kind of lead the project and earn that position of trust and yeah. it's not it's not easy and it's not necessarily formulaic that's that's really interesting. Um, I think one small take on it is um, I try to build a program and function into those details. So right. the you know architects will obsess or designers will obsess on you know extraordinary ways of folding stone and doing this and um, or process of cutting the stone and doing it in a really unique way. And if the client knew you were spending money on that detail, that they probably just pass over and it, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, that's a waste of their money or just, it's not worth it. But if you then program it and make that little detail functional in some way mm -hmm. that then they can love. And this really gets to the core of what I love about our company is we always are building narratives around architecture or architecture within narratives. And so it's, it's all that storytelling within even a detail or yeah. any ornamentation. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, if I ever need to explain why we've spent money on something uh, or a detail or, um, it's, I think, because we've programmed it somehow. Yeah. Um, well, how do you make sure that it's the right client in the first place to, to, to be able to set up this kind of relationship? Because I think this is quite interesting as well, because clearly <clears throat> you're not dealing with certain types of clients who would be averse to you know, the level of detail and narrative. That's why that, that's the, that's the, that's the, the kind of little, the little extra spice. It's the luxury. It's the, yeah, it's yeah. the, it's the thing that they're, they're coming for here. So how, how do you make sure that you, it is, that's you're qualifying the client that they're going to be the right person to go on this journey with you, as opposed to, you know, a client that suddenly is putting up red flags and is getting concerned or wants to control the process too much. Sorry, I said something in an interview that killed me a long time ago, but I, I said something like, you know, I fall in love with every client. Did we ever, did we talk about this? Like, Possibly. It, and it's just meaning like they, someone extrapolated of like, oh, he's in love with, you know, clients. I just meant like, you know, people are, are wonderful and the mm. nuances of, you know, we're architects and interior designers and you, and you want to know how they live and wake up and, you know, use all the details of, of what you're about to create. And so you get to know them and, and just the inherent beauty of a person comes through mm -hmm. the more time you spend with them. And I just, um, I think it could be that moment of, of picking up on what they need and what we think they need. And then, and, um, 
and then trying to extrapolate it into mm -hmm. a story, a concept, and then that flows out into the into the des design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's no filter on our client. I mean, and and I guess I was saying all that, and meaning to say, there's no client I I wouldn't love to work and design with, mm -hmm. and um, uh, because it, it kind of goes back to the collaborations. Um, it's amazing when you know two sets of thought process culture. Um, background come together and try to build something uh, you know it's it's a completely unique um, moment um, and you can create some really wonderful things mm -hmm. so uh, I, I try to pick up on a lot of you know what inspires them what inspires us and, yeah. and we try to bring that together um, I, I suppose in that way there's something very it's very reassuring as well because it's kind of like biographical of the clients there's there, there's something kind of reflective about it and it's a and it's often an opportunity for them certainly with for looking at kind of private residential it's a time for them to set out a philosophy of living and the architectural conversation is actually part of articulating that yeah it just happens to manifest itself like three-dimensionally or in space yeah and that that, that really shows up um in the book uh i think i think of two chapters one is um literally Sabelle Young, a Canadian artist who does all this beautiful origami um, mm -hmm. uh, Japanese paper work, sculptures. She came down, we spent the day uh, with the family and just small stories, past, you know, like fun little things and photo albums and where you've lived and all this stuff came up. And um, she went back and created a, a beautiful big four foot, you know, kind of uh, wall sculpture that were all those stories entangled into just pictorial little, you know, objects and, and things. And we've done that before with um, uh, Erdos 1436, a, right. a, um, a beautiful uh, cashmere luxury brand. And um, we've showed the process of how things are made. Um, there are all sorts of things. Uh, you know, I always, there's great opportunities to work with clients at, because she really comes in and, and reinterprets the stories and stuff. So go, coming back to the, the, the penthouse, yeah. and you've got it photographed, it's kind of evolved from, it's, a, it's evolved from a series of notes explaining the thinking behind it, and now you've right. got this extraordinary book. Did it just show up to the, you know, you literally just sent the book in its published <laughs> form to the client, and, they, and that was the first time they'd seen. Oh yes, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then, and then what was the conversation about what your intentions were for the book afterwards and and the, the kind of publicity around it and the because obviously you, you, right, had, you right. had a few kind of um launch events here and in in, in london and yeah we just yeah, one in paris as well we you? just finished uh, so we did um new york then london paris mm -hmm. la uh and then we're back and uh that was a, a fun four or five months of a whirlwind you know, throwing parties in different yeah. cities um, wasn't as easy as I thought, you know, and also, um, but uh, it's been a wonderful tool, I, if I can even say that, like, it's just, a, it's wonderful when the um, potential client yeah. you know, says, hey, l let's work together. And I was like, oh, come, you know, like, see what we've done just on one project. So it's been so, you know, valuable to just be able to... Um, mm -hmm pass a little thicker portfolio around. It's it's funny because I wanted to be true to the nature of the actual project and, um, you know, a Houston penthouse doesn't sell very well in Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, it, but I, I, it is a Houston penthouse and it was all about the stories of everyone. And um, uh, and all of those artists are, are international. And so um, it is interesting, there were, about seven or eight different vendors in Paris, and we had a wonderful party um, because we were celebrating all of them, and they they brought tons of friends and uh, clients, and uh, so that experience has just been. Um, it wasn't again really about us. It was, it was about meeting new mm -hmm. new people and branching out, um, and and hearing a, a lot of their stories and meeting a lot of their friends. So um, no, it's been a, a wonderful success in that way and uh, did, did you when you put the book together did you have the think that you were <laughs> going to do a, a kind of launch tour with it or was this were you talking with a PR um, strategist or how did the idea come about because I, I think it's a really 
number one, just putting together a book of somebody's residence. I've seen a number of architects do this very well. And I mean, we've got a client in a, a business of architecture who um, did a, restored an old antique Japanese door for a client and, right. and installed it into the house. And it's like a you know, quarter, quarter million dollars door, right? <laughs> right? And they made this beautiful um, kind of mono, monograph book of it. And, you just know, on the door? Just on the oh, door, cool. on, the, on the fabrication of it, the restoration of it, how they set it in. Oh, and right. it sits there on the, you know, as soon as you enter into the house, there's the book of the door. Yeah. And oh, it's obviously, it's a conversation starter. It's a great marketing tool in terms of for the for the architects because the the clients always want to show everybody you know no, anyone, yeah. anyone who comes in the house hey look at the door da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. they're you know it's a very nice kind of classy elegant way of you know of, of branding and and creating that and creating that story about the door and also publicizing yourself in a very discreet yeah but you know thoughtful manner we didn't <laughs> we didn't have any plans i i really um you know, as we're talking, there's, there's so many similarities to the Mystery on Fifth Avenue, which we've already talked about. But, um, the, you know, the book was really just meant for the client. And then when I got that off, and then we also, you have to print so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are we going to do with all the, you know, and, and obviously we have a great publisher, Images, uh, Image Publishing um, out of Australia. And uh, the... They've got a great network. So I just, you know, I, I, once they saw it, I was like, by the way, we this kind of ran away from us and, and, you know, this will be out in bookstores and things like that. And, um, and you know, they were totally fine. Um, I think there's so many fun, beautiful stories that you, you do want to, um, you know, market that. And, and uh, it's a perfect example mm -hmm. of, of the best well, way I, we I, kind of I, work. I so. think what's nice about this as well is actually it's, it's where, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that most, many architects don't necessarily dis make the distinction between marketing and something that's actually a natural part of their creative process. And this was kind of part of a, of a creative dialogue and a, a wanting to explain what the details were. And then it kind of, the, the marketing opportunity emerges as opposed to it being something that was much more strategically laid out. And that's totally, you know, a very valid way of, of doing it. It just means, you know, that actually we start to see that there is, you know, talking about the design process in any man, in any way is brilliant. Yeah. It's just, that's what we should be doing as architects. There's too much of it hidden away. And, right. you know, we don't take the opportunity to talk about our work or, chore or curate it or choreograph it in a, in a kind of manner that's, that's meaningful. And then this becomes great because now you've got, you've got a load of books, they're lovely things to give away to people. Mm -hmm. And then there's the opportunity to create a live event around something. Yeah. And again, you know, this is, this is a, as a kind of marketing tool to bring pe people together, bring clients together. Mm -hmm. I could imagine what sorts of people were you inviting to the, to the live events, to the, to the parties? Um, it, well, it was any, any maker and vendor or artisan that was in each town. Uh, we, we asked them to co-host. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for London, there were, um, six hosts, I think, and then um, they brought, and that was kind of beautifully curated only in that we didn't have a very big space. Um, Tyler Hayes from BDDW was so mm -hmm. nice to offer um, the New York showroom, the London showroom, and then fortunately he opened LA just in time. <laughs> so <laughs> a couple months later, I, we threw the second party there. Um, a, a lot of um, journalists and writers, and then also um, clients, and then um, friends of friends. And mm -hmm. um, it was it was a nice, you know, wonderful community. And it was, a, those were all special evenings because um, it, it was an extended family kind of really coming together. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and sorry, I don't know when, when you're going to drop that bomb of a question, where, <laughs> because when you said, I'm gonna ask you the successes and then the, <laughs> The, the setbacks or whatever and I'm like you know just been trying to think like oh so what were what were the well, setbacks so, sorry I mean and this is why I just I I guess I planted that question <laughs> but um meaning you planted that seed earlier um uh, my original intent that this was the only aspect of during COVID I was so excited by this apartment and when we got all these um beautiful images back from Nick um I was like this, 
like these photo the photography is amazing, but you need to see the space, you know, as the light changes and goes through Elisa's curtains that are all wood and silk. Um, you know, you, you need to really experience this with, um, you know, feel the smoke in the air or just mm -hmm. the lighting or whatever. And so um, I wrote three short films. Well, one, and then it kind of extrapolated into three short films. And we were, I spent endless hours trying to get this produced and um, uh, made into films. And my hope was that uh, we would um, be able to do a screening and have a book launch at the same time of these three short films. And, and it was, uh, there were two wonderful actors, um, Clelia and Guillaume, who were doing these three different stories and different, uh, you know, different characters within each. But, um, you know, they're extraordinarily talented. And, and I just thought, oh, this is, this is a wonderful, that's like a wonderful picture of taking the architecture and, and then seeing it in the film. And, you know, I wanted it to be like Tom mm -hmm. Ford's single man. You know, really, yeah. uh, and we just, I couldn't get them made and not, you know, like I went through th three or four different, uh, so did you, did you have characters in the, in the, in the films? Or oh yeah. 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 Like yeah. And, and the thing that killed us was the, um, the HOA wouldn't allow us to, um, film in the lobby and there was right. a whole important sequence. One was a comedy, one was a drama, one was a, a, a music video and, um, <laughs> and so anyway sorry I, you know i digress well, but that's, that, uh, that's 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 an extraordinary amount of thought to to go into the capture of a project yeah and so um i thought that was that was my original marketing mm -hmm. plan of like okay this would be really cool um you know maybe we have screenings in soho houses all over you know the world of like oh screening and a book launch or whatever but um mm -hmm. anyway sadly uh i i the three films didn't happen, and um, how far did you get into the the scripts? What were they about? <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> no, no, the scripts are locked in. Um, I had a co-writer, like Christian Haunton, um did some beautiful writing with me, and um, the. Uh, well, and what I love about oh, and Matt Craig, sorry, what, also what I love about this is it's kind of like it's a it's a like a a whirlwind <laughs> of creative ideas and thinking, and you bring people in to it as well. Yeah, yeah. And there's a kind of this collaborative nature which kind of gets people talking about the project. I'm just, I keep thinking about it like as a marketer. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a really lovely way of just building out a team and publicizing and talking the work. But at the, at the core of it is a, is a creative sort of direction that's coming from it. Yeah. And the idea of having three short films made about the, the space and actually having a, like a plot and a narrative and protagonists and something starts to elevate the project and the architectural storytelling to something very unique, very, yeah. very different. Yeah. And, and, and something, again, an, a nice way to bring people together to see the film and enjoy it and talk about the space. And then two on two boxes kind of, it's there at the center of, of kind of generating it and leading it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was I was really excited, and, and I had a check sitting on the desk, <laughs> written. It was about to be mailed, and and then we got this call of like, oh, you can't do that filming, and um, so we, yes, we were very very close. Uh, it, it's funny, it had a couple of different lives. I was just remembering um, Gracie Abrams, uh, who's huge now, mm -hmm. opened up for Taylor Swift and stuff, um, but she was just launching her career and. There were three songs that we kind of nested together to make one of the the music videos, and I and I thought, oh, and she she really, I think uh, it was during COVID, so her whole plan to tour and stuff um, had been delayed, and so she was somewhat unknown. So my dream was to have Timothy Chalamet and Greg, and Timothy also was. Um, uh, a little bit more available before, you know, obviously he's exploded. But uh, I thought those two would be a fantastic um, um, uh, way to also present this. Um, uh, one of them was remaking the Twilight Zone, a old right. episode, and um, so we really had a lot of fun with it. Uh, and then it, yeah. And, and then and how how involved was? And did the client know about any of these the, the filmic ideas? And the they were fine with us filming and. Uh, um, I think we were all really proud of the project and, yeah. and they were supportive. Um, 
Uh, so and, and do and do you ever with other clients have the, uh, kind of any kind of pushback in terms of being able to photograph and publicize projects and how do you of na- course. navigate that because it's always a such yeah. a that's really tough because um and particularly with the sorts of things that you guys are doing it's like you need to see like the little details and inside somebody's <laughs> <laughs> underwear drawer yeah, you know? yeah 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 <laughs> look at this crazy there's, way we put the underwear there's together there's something hidden there you know that's yeah um it's about uh 80 20 you know right um the trust is there and uh, if it's acceptable we only use it for portfolio use versus um uh you know there's a lot of projects we can't um post and publish um which is a little bit disheartening but mm-hmm. but it's okay uh um just having that, the, those treasures to remember and to, you know to, to archive um, is is wonderful. We did a house upstate in New York in, Ca- in Lake Canandaigua, and um, there's uh, it was four generations in this house now, um, and we've expanded it and renovated it and and it's even moved from a you know the cabin the original cabin was sort of moved from mm-hmm. another property, um, so it's had all this storytelling and life to it, and then there's some. Um, incredible ancient grounds around there, and um, and there are a lot of folklore and mythology of serpents coming out of the lake, and you know, doing some fun, wonderful things. We harnessed all that, and then um, kind of created another mini mystery um, storytelling around the house, and mm-hmm. clues, and uh, a fun thing. Um, and also, um, we've written a film on that as well, thinking. That would be a nice way to round it out as well, um, to then um, continue that storytelling into cinema. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's when I said a couple of de- like a decade per discipline. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just making that transition to try, try to get a more film into our life. Um, I mean, we've had a film company for 15 years and mm-hmm. uh, or 20, and um, uh, we've just been doing small things. But I, my hope is that we really are able to you know, break through and get into that. Amazing. Um, um, <clears throat> going back to the, the, the Houston penthouse yeah. project, how has that kind of concluded with the, with the client? They're all happy with the way that the publicity went for the, for the project. And what were some of the results from the tour, if you like? You know, um, they didn't attend every event, um, but we had a wonderful New York event with them. Um, and... You know, I forgot to mention we did uh, one in Dallas, so right. a lot of people ended up coming to that one um, because we did it with Aria Stone Gallery, who, sure. who was one of the vendors. But um, uh, Houston was keeps starting and stopping um, in in terms of doing a launch there. Uh, but in terms, like it's just a lot of connections and meeting new people and. and um, new people to make things with uh, mm-hmm. so um we're it, that's always the the that important moment of those evenings um you know getting crowds together and sharing stories mm-hmm. and then meeting new people and um well, it's, it's interesting but well, one of the things i like about the book and also having a focus and telling the story of all the craftspeople and the artisans and all the the people that made the project that's really nice as well is you know, often from a marketing perspective, we'll talk about the idea of a dream team. And actually, you know, it's actually a little strategy that you can create. You can make a postcard, for example, and have your, here are the top five vendors that we, that we, that we work with. And that actually becomes a very valuable little piece of information for any client to have. <laughs> right. with, and it's also a nice marketing tool because you can give it to the 10 people who are on that list and they're going to be like 10 marketeers for you right. dishing out the the, the postcards. So that's right. just a very a very pared back simple version of what the book is doing and now the book is something that all the vendors are proud of and mm-hmm. want to show to people and they're going to be inclined to even if they have one copy of it they're going to want to discover my they, ploy. Yeah, yeah, they're going to they want to show people and <laughs> and do it and it's got this lovely way of of kind of continuing the conversation by making it about other people. And by sharing and, you know, th- th- this is a really, a, like, a, this is a, a, a way of talking about your own work. When you start celebrating the work of other people mm-hmm. in involved in it, then you create this 
this tension for it to want to be shared by those people as well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, over the course of the of my career, that's been the hardest part of um, realizing once you start making something and you've got a special vendor who can use a whiz at acrylic or metal hmm. or wood, and, you know, we hoarded them for a long time, like, oh, don't tell anyone because, you know, then they'll get busy and then, they're like, they're kind of our go-to. And, um, and when we started this book, there was a big discussion about that because it's like, oh, but this is our secret sauce or, you know, the, our mm. recipe of, of how to make things. Um, and I, you know, you, I think in anything, you just stop back, you step back and, you know, open your heart and try to be as generous as possible. Yep. And, and, you know, you realize for a long time, like, that's not going to help you. <laughs> if you're if you're keeping that amazing woodworker in in a closet, you know, for only your stuff, I mean, it's helpful. <laughs> it's helpful, but no. Um, uh, Gregory uh, has had immense success, um, um, probably more so <laughs> than anyone, you know, based on this book, uh, just because he he built uh, you know all this extraordinary millwork. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but you know, I also want to say, and I and it's really important to distinguish. Um, there were a lot of stories in, uh, from the artisans. We didn't collaborate with everyone, mm -hmm. but it was kind of a spiritual collaboration of all of us coming together. Because I want to be careful to say, you know, Roman and Williams and um, Tyler, they're all incredible mm -hmm. um, uh, designers and architects. Um, and, you know, we curated a few of their furniture items and things like that and, and tried to work with them in, in different ways. But um, um, I just w want to be careful. Sorry, that's a, it's a nuance. Sure. <laughs> At one time the title was nuanced collaborations, but it just, it, it didn't seem to work. But, um, uh, but that was the explanation of, um, th this is one big family yeah. coming together and doing it. And, and our part was, you know, uh, I think for us, it was a good example of going, look, you've got an incredible terrazzo, wood terrazzo floor mm -hmm. or material system. Um, can it be a flooring? And then, yes, it can. And can we embed planks in it? Yes. Oh, interesting. Let's try. Mm -hmm. And so we love getting into the art of making something, the process of it, and kind of adding things, throwing, like, thinking about other ways of making things and saying, can you do it like that if they can? And so yeah, there's a there's a lot of different distinctions of collaborations yeah. in that book, but um, yeah. but, it, but but I mean that's quite a uh, an interesting insight to have that knowing you know actually how would how would you like it with your developer clients if they were to keep you a secret and this is generally what happens right, right. right? and developers do keep they find a good architect and then you kind of want them to share it and they're like well I don't want to share you with my competitors yeah, right, why would I do right, that right. and. That, could, that that makes that makes sense but it's also i think what we're starting to see nowadays is that it's not there's the the relation the working relationship professional working relationship and the workflows and the efficiency that gets developed that is meaningful and also if you promote somebody else that is meaningful for the other person yeah. they're going to prioritize you they're going to look after your relationship right. and make sure that you're taken care of they're not going to turn their it's it's more unlikely anyway that they're going to turn their back on on you if they, if, if they get busy yeah and and you know and also the other kind of com commercial part of it is that when another one of your vendors is, is kind of growing and doing well then they expand and they've got more capacity and their service yeah. gets better yeah. their whole their, that's the idea anyway it can <laughs> <laughs> in a perfect so, little world it's, yes. not always, it's not always the case it can be like ah oh, okay <laughs> right wow you really imploded it yeah <laughs> um yeah no it was a huge question and um but i think we came out obviously on the right side of of, of just um being as generous as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, when you celebrate, like it, it goes down to the human connection also. It's, it's um, you know, they're, they're all people and I vacation with a lot mm -hmm. of the, you know, like we have dinners and family and, you know, are all together. So it really, there's no other way of, 
of like why why wouldn't you celebrate your your dearest friends and yeah so um yeah and and everyone in a way it all comes back around right mm -hmm. so um and let's talk a little bit um about the type of client that you were you were working with and some of the things that you have to be sensitive to and the kinds of demands that they might have over a you know particularly with the high end residential working with ultra high net worth individuals there's a certain level of client experience that they're expecting could you talk a little bit about that or is this or is this something sure. that's that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. very it's so commonplace for you that you might not be so cognizant of it if you like no um well part of part of it for me um is is perfecting the experience for the client. Mm. Um, I, you know, I always ask a client, um, have they done this before? Mm -hmm. Like, have they built something? And then how was their experience if they had? And, you know, people are always <laughs> wavering. And I said, well, I think, like, come with us. Like, I think you'll have fun. And I think, you know, it will be a, a unique experience. And, and I, um, I try very hard to, to do that and to and to follow through with that and um you know there's a reason we tried to build out a beautiful showcase office and i think of this as a theater and um a way to pre you know the way we make presentations are very theatrical and if we have you know people coming into town and we've only got a three-hour meeting and we've got a, you know a massive like that's a long time and you know they're gonna need a bite to eat and this, and you know, so you try to orchestrate the experience um, and, and, you know, designers of our service <laughs> industry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a bit of half the battle. It's mm -hmm. also managing their expectations. So our office, um, you know, we email every Friday weekly updates and whether people read them or not, or there's, you know, it's just information. It's just to, to help them uh, I'm like, oh yeah, this is going on. And, oh, this is all the stuff, and yeah. we have because we haven't heard from them in a couple of weeks, or, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, that I think is really important, and and just holding their hand through this process, and um, and all the on-site process of building things is so much fun. But if they're not in town or they don't want to be a part of that, all the photos and you know just you know kind of watch, seeing that step by step. So I think that's the loveliest thing and we're always making fun extraordinary mm -hmm. things um so the pictures from the factories are you know always fun to yeah. see and experience and well it's interesting you say actually that that you know the curation of of the, your office your studio is a place for entertaining and hosting and i know that you you know you do private dinners private and dinners <laughs> and this we're sitting on this, this mind-bendingly wonderful table yeah. and that's often something a lot of architects miss the opportunity on is is the creating the the hospitality aspect of the service, and particularly when it's you know um, kind of high net worth individuals who are used to luxury experiences in other in pretty much anything that they're engaging with, you know I, mean, I had a, a client recently say to me that at, when we're dealing with this type of clientele, we're not competing with other architects; we're competing with their safari in Tanzania right, or right. their ability to go and you know do whatever kind of exotic lavish trip that they can they have an expectation yeah. and I've seen architects in the past as well who have hired um, hospitality consultants from the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons for so example yeah. to train their team in how to create a luxury experience for their clientele because there's an enormous amount of extra value that can be done with that. And it's not massive input on the architect's side. No, it's just, yeah. it's creating a fantastic seamless experience. And I think that's quite a, and clearly you guys are quite masterful at being able to do that. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, we, we definitely try and, and make that, um, you know, the primary focus as well as then executing a design. Um, yeah, I, that's, very smart. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, what what do we have planned for the rest of twenty twenty four? Well, l uh, lots of resident wonderful residential projects. Um, we just finished uh, two floors in the Rockefeller Center for a big commercial office uh, build out, and we're just looking at another one. Um, 
uh, in New York, and that's going to be a, a beautiful big project. And um, we, we, I've anyway, lots of secret projects <laughs> which I can't always talk about, but um, there are some really wonderful things that are international that are pretty interesting. Um, but uh, I've been doing a lot of. Uh, travel back and forth to Portugal because mm -hmm. there's um, some wonderful opportunities there and we've been selling um, property to or, or selling property on clients and things sorry I'm not selling them but um, I mean we found them and we said well, that, buy that, this that, and we'll do something you were saying this this is interesting is this a, a new service that you're putting together or is it something you're collaborating with other kind of real estate agents to help clients at the really early stages oh yeah well you know what uh, you always everyone that? like in our early clients in new york were always saying oh if you find a building to renovate let's do it and so you know i would i always love having my hand, you know fingers on on beautiful properties and opportunities and then just traveling internationally they were even more so so i'm always telling clients oh you should this is a hot little bed there and mm -hmm. like you know um and so in a way, uh, now it's funny, the last couple of years I meet people and I mention Portugal and they say, oh, you know what I really want is a Tuscan villa. <laughs> and then so we're, you know, I found three different opportunities and, and I just love it. It's not a service. It's not a, I, you know, it's just for the love of finding something yeah. and, um, and knowing that maybe we would be traveling to that area and and having a project, so mm -hmm. um, uh, I love providing that just because it's fun mm -hmm. to then, you know, be at the inception of like, wow, yeah. this is a great opportunity, and, and seeing all those possibilities um, of a, what you can do. So, um, but it's it's also it's also very smart and it's a it's a good way of kind of proactively leading the client to have a project happen yeah and you can actually start to be you know demonstrate well here's actually with his three great properties that we think you might like whereas yeah. if you left it to the client they might not do anything about it and right. be thinking about it for ages and nothing happens and then you're just passively waiting and hoping whereas this is actually yeah it's it's a proactive it definitely is. I it's um, despite we're referral, you know, based and and we we grew very quickly when mm -hmm. we started um, with just kind of exponential um, people, you know, three people offering our name and stuff. I always love to try to direct what we're doing and and direct the, the and steer the office in mm -hmm. in different directions on. Um, and I think that's the entrepreneur aspect of, of me where I'm constantly looking for the opportunities and then also, yeah, like these little business things. So I, I, you know, I have one big fun, big secret project and then I had to create another little secret project to help support it. And so, um, I'm constantly, um, uh, looking, um, for those opportunities yeah. and, and, and it really then allows for us to, um, I think, it, sorry, architecture firms spreading out five disciplines and, and, um, sometimes feels like our wings are clipped or, you know, like we really, we want to expand and do, mm -hmm. um, those things. So in any project, I'm always like, Oh, but what if we make, a lot of these things as products or what if we do some graphic design like it was funny i just pitched um a client uh we've been doing these one page posters uh sorry one no novel on a one poster one page and oh yes i saw those in your office. yeah yeah um and and sorry there, there's a wonderful graphic design firm in um holland that started this and uh Philip Roth, I was telling him about it and he said, oh, do, do one of my books. And so we ended up doing it. And it's incredible, it's tiny text. You can see um, where uh, all the dialogue occurs and then, you know, um, it, it's just visually seeing a book all yeah, open it's, I mean, it's to one text. Beautiful. Um, and so then I was calling Jonathan Safran Foer and all these people going like, oh, let's do your books and uh, Malcolm Gladwell and all this. And, <laughs> And then, 
And then none of those, like, they all kind of laughed at me. And, um, uh, but I've been dying to do, a, you know, something this big with all seven novels of my struggle mm -hmm. um, in Arvsgaard. Uh, and so I, I pitched that uh, in a meeting two weeks ago, and I think we may do it. Amazing. Um, because I just want a wall of, like, my struggle, all seven novels of it. So, oh, my God, is it six? I may be wrong, but um, anyway. Uh, so I'm always constantly <laughs> pitching at the same time. But this is what Sorry, this is, this is why this is what I really enjoy about your 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 practice is that there's a kind of the distinction between the kind of creative process and say what I might call marketing is like it's quite blurred. And I'll be looking at a lot of what things you're you're doing, and actually that's a very good marketing strategy inside of that. But it's driven by like an authentic creative curiosity in yeah. many, in many cases. Like you know the idea of you know. Oh, I've just had this idea of putting putting books on a whole page, and I'm going to call up a whole lot of people to tell them about it, and they might think you're bonkers. But it's it, but it's, so many phone calls that people think but, I'm bonkers. But it's, so yeah. but it's great because it's like that's what we should be. That's what you need to be doing as a business person is is kind of connecting with people all yeah. the time, and you know, and it's it's kind of on brand this bubbling hot box literally of of creative ideas, and you're calling people up to tell them about an idea, and that might not be the right one for them, but they're it's a it's a that's a campaign it's a it's a kind of marketing campaign and a way of connecting and keeping the the like a, a a tribe or a community informed about what it is you're doing yeah yeah that that uh, that's constantly i'm always rewriting or re you know like mm -hmm. um really pitching uh different opportunities so uh it, it's just i can't help not seeing how work can flow through all of the disciplines and and really and I, I think it just makes the architecture projects so much stronger mm -hmm. um um when you're thinking about it in in kind of all those different aspects so um yeah wonderful i think that's the and thanks thanks for <laughs> uh, 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 that's the perfect place for us to conclude the the conversation now and i look forward to the next conversation that we have when the secret projects are allowed to be spoken about yes i'm sorry i keep dropping those silly well well it's, it's good it's 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 leading up it's planting the, the teasers I'm planting the mysteries <laughs> for everyone to come back and join us exactly again. exactly but always a pleasure talking with you eric so Absolutely. thank you so much you too thank you so much and that's a wrap. And one more thing, if you haven't already, please do head on over to iTunes or Spotify and leave us a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show and we'd love to get your feedback and we'd love to hear what it is that you'd like to see more of and what you love about the show already. And now a message from today's sponsor. BIM can be important for your next project, but that's not the only thing you need for your next project. That's why it's important that 95% of manufacturers who offer free BIM files on RCAT also offer another type of data that your project needs. That means 95% of the products with BIM also have CAD files, they have specifications, and a patented spec wizard and or they have product information to help you make sure you're making the right selection for your particular condition. So stop going to a site with just BIM Go to RCAT where everything is there collected for you to get everything you need for your next project for free and without registering. That's RCAT, A-R-C-A-T dot com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.